Ever since Narendra Modi became Prime Minister of India in 2014, the attacks on Muslims and Christians have escalated sharply. This escalation is not by design. It is hardwired into the ideology of Hindutva that was first propounded by Vinayak Tawarkar, the patron saint of Mr. Modi's political party, exactly a hundred years ago. As it is well known, Savarkar wrote a treatise called Essentials of Hindutva, in which he called communists, Muslims, and Christians as the key enemies of the Indian nation and its Hindu people. Savarkar named the Indian subcontinent the great Hindu Rashtra, or nation, insisting that it had a common geography, religion, and culture. In this imagination, India and Hindu were interchangeable, and he explicitly said that Muslims and Christians could not be Indians unless they renounced their quote-unquote foreign religions and accepted the supremacy of the Hindu religions, its gods, culture. In this view, Buddhists, Jains, and Sikhs had to bow before the Hindu culture. Christoph Jafferle, one of the most noted scholars on Hindu nationalism, calls Savarkar's work the first character of Hindu nationalism. In his last book that he wrote in 1963, just before his death, Savarkar's death, Six Glorious Epochs, Savarkar said Muslims and Christians aimed to destroy Hinduism. He openly called for India to adopt authoritarian rule like Nazi Germany and fascist Italy did. So even if we are alarmed today at the rise in the violence against Christians and Muslims in India, we must understand that the hatred and bigotry is not something that started out when Modi became prime minister seven and a year, half years ago. The hatred, bigotry, and violence against Christians and Muslims is the only agenda, the only action item for Rashtra Swamsang, the RSS, which is the motherhood of Hindu extremism in India. The RSS was founded in 1925, which makes it 96 years old today. And it has never wavered in its commitment to attacking Muslims and Christians in India. It has been recorded that the RSS membership had grown to 600,000 volunteers in the 1940s when India gained independence. There are thousands of reports of Indian government's own intelligence departments that the RSS and its cadres were involved in mass violence against Muslims during India's partition years of 1946 and 1947. <clears throat> Today, the RSS is said to have well over 5 million members, but tens of millions more as sympathizers. What Modi has done is provided widespread impunity to Hindu extremists, mobs across the country, emboldening and empowering them to act out their bigotry and hatred with extreme violence. Across India, Christian pastors and Muslim imams are routinely arrested and put in prison as the entire criminal justice has been radicalized. Such radicalization has, of course, swept through the police forces and other security agencies but also through the community of liars who often publicly refuse to take up cases of Christians and Muslims falsely accused of crimes of forced conversions and others. Saddest of them, all is the radicalization of judiciary who openly practice discrimination against Christian and Muslim accused, denying them bail and incarcerating them for decades. Hindu nationalists today are appointed to prominent cabinet and ministerial level positions in government. The man who was the head of Bajrangdal, a criminal militia that is a wing of RSS in the state of Odisha, when a priest from Australia and his two sons were burned to death in their car, was appointed a federal minister by Modi in 2019. India's government, as well as the governments in many states, will need to take various steps to stop the violence against Christians. They have to act proactively and move, dis more, move decisively. Otherwise, the situation will continue to get worse. Firstly, the government needs to enact a comprehensive national legislation against 
targeted and communal violence. For this, India's parliament needs to deliver on the promise of India's constitution that guarantees the freedom to practice any faith without an active law that criminalizes attacks on minorities, this constitutional guarantee remains a dead letter. Secondly, the federal government must stay down the state governments in states such as Uttar Pradesh, Himachal Pradesh, Maharashtra, Jharkhand, Gujarat, Madhya Pradesh, Chhattisgarh, Odisha, among others, to repeal their unconstitutional laws that have limited religious freedom and are being misused by these to state to target minorities. <clears throat> Thirdly, India's federal government must enforce the rule of law and arrest the Hindu extremist groups that are threatening and committing violence via pre-planned attacks on Christians. Next, the government needs to ensure that stringent action is taken against violators under criminal law. All that governments must pr prosecute those all state government must prosecute these police officials who fail in their constitutional duty to protect the minorities from practicing their faith and actually are complicit in the attacks on religious minorities. The shielding of the attackers must immediately stop. The federal government must immediately ensure that a commission for human rights and a commission for minorities is operational in every state and that Members of each commission are appointed by transparent and non-partisan procedures. Will the Modi government deliver on any of these? It does not seem so. Going by Modi's own ideological extremism that is built on a hatred for Muslims and Christians over decades, we must not forget that he was literally the mastermind of the massacres Muslims and killed more in 2000 in the state of Gujarat when he was chief minister nearly 20 years ago. There is little hope also from the judicial system too, wherein the judges have systematically protected the Hindu extremists, including the high and mighty, who have carried out attacks against minorities. The judiciary has spectacularly failed to even hold Modi to legal account for his role in the anti-Muslim violence in Gujarat. One of one by one, dozens of police officers and politicians who were directly involved in programs and extrajudicial killings have not only been exonerated by the courts, but also rewarded for their criminal behavior. So will be the case for those police officers who are persecuting Christians now. The only recourse available to us now is the weight of international opinion. And that is why it is critical that the administration of President Joe Biden talks truth to Modi and clearly tells him that the continued violence against Christians and Muslims will not be tolerated. In a week from now, on December 9 and 10, the Biden administration is organizing a summit for democracy where Modi has been invited. Will the United States government bluntly tell Modi that his country is on the wrong path and that the US will not tolerate the continued violence against the religious minorities in India. We have to wait and see. Thank you.